Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and sometimes gouache. And today we are doing our spiderweb project in gouache. Oh. <laughs> we have Michael here working the cameras. Hello. And we are gonna be doing this project in four steps. So our very first step is we are going to do our background. Our second step is we are going to do the frame. Our third step is we are going to do the web and the spider. And our fourth step is the wood grain textures and just any finishing details on our project. Super cool. Now, before we get started, I have to give credit to our photographer. I actually saw this image on Pinterest and totally fell in love with it and then did some sleuthing to see who the photographer was. And I messaged her and I asked her if it was okay if I taught how to teach her photo to my painting students on YouTube. And she was just like, of course, that's so great. And so I want to give a big shout out to photography by Sammy. And if you want to follow her on Instagram, it's photography dot by dot Sammy S A M I. Um, very talented, such gorgeous photos. And I just want to, um, thank her for letting us use her photograph. Thanks, Sammy. Thanks, Sammy. You're so great. Okay. And I hope you guys really enjoy this painting. So, um, <clears throat> We are not transferring our outline yet. An outline does come with this project, but we're gonna do our background first, and then we will transfer our outline. And that's because gouache is opaque. And if we were to transfer our outline and then paint the background, we would essentially be covering our entire outline. So um, we do that after we do our background. Now, if you are unfamiliar with gouache, please know that we have an intro to gouache video where I go over how to use it, some tips, how it's different and similar to watercolor and acrylic paint, and just give you some background information. So you kind of have more understanding of what goes into this. Now we are using five colors for this project. I have permanent white, ivory black, turquoise blue, yellow ochre, and brilliant orange. And I have that here on my palette. Just a little brilliant orange, but I haven't done that yet. Now, let us do our oath and then we will start painting. Okay? Sounds good. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to compare my work. No, no, no. You said you <laughs> That's, that can't be it. That's not it. That's not it at all. <laughs> I promise. Not to compare I my work. I promise not to compare my work. <laughs> and I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. Ding! <laughs> yes, fun. <laughs> I promise to hate myself and I to promise compare to my work. Talk so unkindly to myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's sometimes how I feel. We talk like that. We don't even know it, but man, sometimes we're mean and we got to be aware of it. All right, so. Um, what we are going to do, and I'm telling you this now, is you want to make sure that you have a one inch brush that is dry for this step in the project. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna wet our paper, drop in paint, and then use our dry brush to blend. And it blends so much better when it's dry because it gets a smoother blend. When your wash is wet and you try and blend it out, the little bristles actually chunk up and then they create streaks within your painting. So if you want a soft blend where there's no chonkiness, then use the dry brush. Okay. Chonk. Chonky. Chonky boy. Okay. Let us start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my entire paper. If you do not have, I have some orange on it, but that's okay. Rinse that off. Um, if you do not have an extra one inch wash, you just have one, then use your round 12. To wet. If you have a larger brush, like any other size large brush, we're just wetting our paper. So you could you could even use like a sponge. The hard thing is that um, with smaller brushes like the round 12 using to wet the entire surface, it just takes a little bit longer to wet the whole thing. That's it. That's the only difference. And you want to make sure it's thoroughly wet like a thin layer of water on top because we kind of want these colors to move. So sometimes I wet and then I do one more layer of water because then it will stay wet longer. Sometimes if you just do one thin layer, by the time you're done, the first part is dry. And you're like, oh shoot. Okay, so now I'm gonna take yellow, 
turquoise to create this like green and a little bit of black. I'm just gonna start dropping in this color loosely. See how loose I'm being? Be loose. It's not a big deal. All the cool kids do it. All the cool kids are doing it. It's not a big deal, you guys. It's just paint. It's just paint on paper. And I'm dropping in different colors here and there and not totally blending all of them out. And the reason for that is I want this to feel like an out of focus background, like a woodsy out of focus background area. And I could move my, my um, paints back and forth and blend this all into one color, but that's not really true to how we see backgrounds that are out of focus. There's hints of blue here and yellow here and black here. And so we're really trying to go for that. And I'm only gonna go about two thirds of the way up. Now you can see that sometimes the paint will kind of follow up on the edges here. That's okay. Not a big deal at all. Maybe a little extra blue here. And I really love the hint of yellow here. And go maybe a little bit darker than you would feel comfortable doing so because we really want the spider web to pop the little water drops and to make sure that the white pops on the background is the background needs to be dark. This looks like a Monet painting. Oh my gosh, it does. You did it. Why do I love it so much just like that? All right, tutorial's over. We did it, you guys. <laughs> Go have a drink. Okay. <laughs> We're just gonna go. I'm just not thinking about it. I'm not overthinking it, I'm just doing it. So any parts that I think are gonna be too light, I'm just putting right on top. Now I'm getting to the point where my paper is starting to dry. So I gotta be like, okay, Sarah, hurry up. Hurry up here, hurry up. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my handy dandy dry one inch wash. I'm just gonna kind of blend. So it's okay if the paint blends to the top and depending on what colors you have at the top, that's what's gonna get blended into the like sky background. But if it's blue, yellow, gray, black, all of it will work out just fine. And then I'm gonna blend out the bottom. Not a lot to lose the color chunks, but just to smooth it so it looks out of focus. Now, if you want it to seem um, like more static, like it's not moving, you're gonna wanna blend up and down. Notice that I did an angle that first wash and it felt like it was moving. So if you don't want the feeling of the world spinning, then go ahead and go up and down. Now I'm trying to get rid of all this extra paint because I wanna blend along the top, but if I have too much paint on my brush, then I'm just gonna actually move all of that color. And I don't want that. I want the top to stay gray, a very light color. Now, because I gave you um, our reference photo photographer, her Instagram, um, I'm sure this photo is on her Instagram. So if you want to see the actual reference photo, please feel free to take a look and that might help you with some of these things. And then one last thing that if you really want to, and if this is only if you're feeling a little edgy, is if you want it to feel like a forest edge and not just totally smooth, you can try and like do little peaks coming out, like so, and then kind of like blend those out. So it gives a hint of a forest like tree line without having to paint trees. But that's kind of hard to do while also blending. So if you start this and you're like, no, then just blend it out, it's not a big deal. But doesn't that give that hint of forest? Totally. Amazing. <laughs> Magic trick. Monet. Monet. <laughs> Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to let this dry and then we are going to transfer our outline, okay? So we're gonna fast forward that part. I'm gonna use my Heat It craft tool dun, 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 dun. to dry this. And then after it's dry, I'm going to just use graphite paper. If you don't have graphite paper, one thing that you can do to transfer um, is you can use a light box 
which also works really well. Another thing that works really well is you can create your own graphite paper. You would essentially just take a pencil and scribble across the entire back of this and then flip it over and draw. And then whatever mark you make, would that graphite would transfer. That's essentially what graphite paper is. Gotcha. So, um, see on the flip side. No. Oh, wait, wait. Because I just remembered something when I saw this outline here. So I'm glad I did it. Is there's like this little glare of light. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it about right here. You see it in my reference photo? Yes. So I'm going to use yellow ochre. And then bright. But not so bright that it like. Blend it around it. Just a hint of light. Perfect. Okay, now we will see you on the flip side. We have arrived on the flip side. <laughs> and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our um, frame. Now, um, essentially the frame is just gonna be black and then we'll go back in and add a highlighted portion on like the, the, in, the width of the frame here. So you can use your one inch wash, you can use whatever brush you want, really. I'm gonna use a one inch wash because it's square, so it's just easier kind of doing straight lines. And I'm just going to go for it. So just go straight across, try and keep it as straight as you can. And then the angle here. I know you love that tape, but do you worry about putting so much paint right on it or is it fine? No, it's fine. Sometimes when I use the heat gun tool, it will make the tape lift up, oh. like not tape down. So sometimes after I use the heat gun tool, I'll just run my finger back over it um, to keep it nice and thick. The hardest thing, honestly, is that your paper starts to warp when you um, get it wet a lot. And then trying to create a straight line from that is really tricky. So on this like highlighted portion, I'm just gonna do like a lighter value and try and keep it as light or as straight as possible. And I'm just using yellow ochre for it right here. And we can go back in and add more of a highlight, but if, if it gets a little too wonky, it's understandable because this is a pretty warped paper at this stage. So just do your best. And it's an old piece of wood. Right. So wood warps, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay. On the flip side, it does. <laughs> and that's where we're at. <laughs> and that's where we are. So you're in the right place. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint our spider and our web. And I just want to say that if you don't like spiders, and that's okay, there are real phobias about spiders and some people just get freaked out by them. Don't put the spider in. That's it. So this little guy, you don't have to put him in. Put a web weaving butterfly. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about this spider web is we're not actually painting the spider web. We're painting water droplets on the spider web. And it's a lot more simple than you might expect. So whenever the spider web goes in a lighter value, like the sky portion, we're going to use black. And then whenever it goes into this dark value, we're going to use white. And we're just going to do dots. Like that's it, but it's gonna create this illusion of water drops on a spider web, which is really cool. So I'm gonna get my round two and I'm gonna start on doing the, the web. Now it's gonna take a little bit of time because it's just a bunch of little dots, but let yourself embrace the process and kind of like, I don't know, zone out a little. You said it's gonna create an illusion, but I think you meant it's gonna create an illusion. <laughs> huh? yeah, excellent. Thank you. I love That's spiders awesome. in theory. You know? For what they do? Yeah. I, I mean, they're yeah. kind of harmless, really. Yeah. There's some that are not harmless, obviously. Yes. But in general, a yeah. vast majority of spiders are harmless. But in practice, in real life, I'm not a fan. Yeah, they... they they do feel a little bit creepy, like they look a little bit creepy, but then it's just like, do I have a, the right to kill them just because they look creepy? It's not nice. Like, I'm not afraid of a crab the same I am of a spider, but they're very similar. They are. 
Okay, so when we get to this spider web portion, I painted my spider really quick just using black. So how we're gonna make this spider web look realistic is you're gonna focus on a couple of things. One, we're gonna rely on implied lines to create the web for us. That means you do not need the dots to be consistent. They don't need to be touching each other in the same size. If anything, you actually want to leave gaps in between and change up the size of your dots. Now be careful though, because your brain is gonna to wanna to create patterns. I just did that, three, three, three. So try and be aware of that. When you notice your brain creating patterns, just be like, uh-uh, brain, not today. Sarah painting time. <laughs> Brainless painting. <laughs> not today. And we don't want to paint over the lines. We're really letting the web be essentially invisible because sometimes it's so thin, it's so barely there that our brain is just like, there's this, there's this web there, you gotta paint every single thing of it, but you don't. And when you do, it actually creates, um, makes it like much thicker than it needs to be. And when you make something very thick, that's not very thick, then it completely eliminates the illusion that it's there, that it's a thing. You know, it kind of makes it feel flat. And then some, you could just do tiny little dots. It doesn't even have to be like a full, like it ju could just be a dab. One of these. <laughs> Do it, dad. <laughs> Perfect. And remember, we're only doing this in the parts where we see the um, sky, where it's a white background. Okay. And then I just have a little bit more to go. And remember, leave gaps and leave more than you might think, like leave sections more than you might think because you can always go back and add more, but you, it, it would be really hard to um, like erase them after you put them in this painting. So do less than you think. And then if you need more, you can always add more. Okay. Now we're essentially getting to the part where we use white. So I'm gonna rinse my brush, make sure there's no black, and then I'm gonna grab white. And just add enough water to make it easy to kind of move around so it's not too gluey. And the same thing. And this is what's kind of hard about being an artist is because when you look at this reference photo and you look at this painting, you don't know how the person arrived there. Like you didn't paint it, right? And so when we don't know how people arrived at the painting or did it, we think like it's so much easier for us to see it for what it is. But when we're painting in our mind, we're like, this is just a bunch of little dots. And since we know how we made it, when we step back, we're gonna just see those bunch of little dots, but you need to look at your painting as if you didn't paint it. You need to see it for what it is and not the process that went behind it because then you'll overthink it. So really be okay that these are just a little dots and that's it. But that's what creates the illusion, you know? Remember, let them kind of vary in size. Let some be like barely there and let some be a bit bigger. And that's because like the water drops will have different disbursements of water amounts along the web. That's why some are bigger and some are smaller. And I'm just gonna keep going. I'm just thinking of the spider building this web. So I imagine they make the big, long, straight web parts. Do they just like jump between each one? <laughs> I don't Stick, know. And then like, okay, one, two, three, jump. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> I can, I could just like imagine spiders like working themselves up to do the jump. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. They're like telling themselves like, it's just a web. I can start over. It's just a web. I can start <laughs> over. It's the same thing for when we like commit. A spider who's afraid of heights, who can't jump. <laughs> like, I can't do it. 
I do feel bad, like after a heavy storm, when a big beautiful spider web gets tore up or something, I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry, buddy. Sorry. I remember, I think it was winter one time. I don't remember the season, but we live kind of in the country and we walked out and we have a porch that has an entryway. And I think Michael went outside to like let the dog out or something. And there was this huge spider web that got made in a matter of hours yeah. because we go in and out across the front porch and it was huge yeah. and it was beautiful. And the spider was like this big in it. It was monstrous. Yeah. And um, he like called me over. He's like, I almost ran into this. Is there anything more? The spider almost caught me. Yeah, is there anything more disturbing than walking through a spider web and you're like, ah. You come out, I'm drained of blood, <laughs> dead in a web. <laughs> That'd be terrible. That, that spider is called an orb weaver. An orb weaver? Yeah, and they're everywhere here. And they're horrifying to look at, but they make beautiful webs. They really do make gorgeous webs. Are they poisonous? No, not at all. They're very kind. Oh. Yeah, we were, we had to, unfortunately, we had to like, we didn't kill him. Do this with your hands on camera. Yeah. Nope. Yep. That's how you can tell an orb weaver because their legs group together. Oh. They make like two sets. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. There you go. Sorry, I was interrupting. No, no, no. That's okay. I was just going to say we had to move them though because it was like the entrance to our house. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just keeping going here and you'll see I have gaps. I have some where my dots are larger and that is creating the illusion of the water drops in and of itself. And don't forget like these kind of um, the more vertical ones. And if you just want to do like a really thin, like maybe the softest hint of the web on some of these spaces, you can. But don't take your round two and white and do a big swoop. You want it to be so subtle, like so barely there. So it's up to you if you want to put that in or not. You do not have to. Now, if you are getting to painting and for whatever reason you can't see what it is that you're painting, like maybe the tra the transfer didn't work very well because the background is so dark, or maybe you forgot a section, just wing it. I mean, it's a spider web. You know, it can have all these different kind of patterns and, and movements and things like that, so... Ew, Sarah. What? I just fell down a little rabbit hole because I was thinking uh, crabs and spiders are very similar. Yeah. Um, they're kind of in the same class of creature, but they're different. Uh, but in some cultures, they eat fried spiders, and they have a white meat inside of them. Okay, so question. Would you try fried spider if we went to go visit those places? I mean, I guess I'd try it. You would try it. I would try it. You would totally try it. I would kind of try anything. I would try it, too. But they said it tastes sweet. Like, uh, I mean, kind of how crab is. Like crab or maybe shrimp or something? Yeah. The spiders are seasoned and deep fried, resulting in a crispy exterior and a soft interior. Listen, am I crazy that that sounds terrible? I mean, not terrible? <laughs> they are said to taste somewhat like a cross between chicken and cod, with the legs being mildly crunchy and the body having a soft white meat. What? I don't know. Okay, for anyone watching, if you have tried spider, please let me know. On purpose. On purpose. <laughs> Do you guys want to hear a horrifying fact? Yes. I can't remember if it's per year or in your lifetime, but you eat, you swallow like 14 spiders in your life or something like Ew. that. Ew. Because you're sleeping. I don't like that. <laughs> Do we need to edit that out? Is that too no, much? That's good. <laughs> We're leaving it. Okay, I'm sorry. If you have a spiteful partner, it's more than that. Because while you sleep, <laughs> they drop them in your mouth. That would be terrible. <laughs> Why are you divorced? Well, my husband likes to... <laughs> now I'm terrified that you do that to me. spiders. Oh, no. No, not me. No. I do have this idea. <laughs> We're married, by the way, in case you guys don't know. Yeah, in case you guys don't. Okay, now I'm going to go into like overdrive. Like I'm just going to like go for it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do this fast. Sometimes doing it fast 
one, you're not like obsessing over every little dot or detail. It makes it a little bit easier to not think. And sometimes when we create, when we're not thinking, we can create more freely. And when you force yourself to paint faster than how you would normally paint, it's actually excellent practice for being able to make decisions quickly. Okay, I'm gonna go back to this fried spiders thing one more time. Okay. Because I was just real brave about trying it or whatever. I got out of the text-based answer and just looked at a picture and I would not try it. No? It looks horrific. Okay, I wouldn't try it either. Too many legs. <laughs> okay, no, I couldn't try it. <laughs> For whatever reason, I forgot about the legs. Yeah, no, I was the, just thinking of the body. And they're tarantulas, so they have hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I changed my mind. I changed my mind. And happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, and I'm kind of noticing that I'm having a pattern of having like these areas where they connect stronger in the water drops, which isn't necessarily wrong because that is a concentrated area but this is these two these areas are feeling very bare all in the same places and I feel like that's messing with my composition a little bit for my eye so I'm just going to go in there and purposely kind of put a few in And again, small and subtle is the way to go, at least in the beginning, because you can always make something bigger. Doesn't this look cool? I love this painting so much. Thank you. I have the best job. I just feel like mesmerized. I just get to watch you paint, you know? Yeah. And you're learning. Am I? You are. Okay. Well, I trust you. You should. <laughs> it was funny because um, if you guys don't know, we have a Facebook group. It's called Let's Make Art Watercolor on Facebook. You're welcome to join it. Um, and I actually put two spider web paintings. I did this one and I did one other one that was kind of like just the web between two, um, sticks or like a twig or a plant or something. And, um, this one won. So I did a vote. So I was just like, Hey, which one would you guys want to learn how to paint? And you all chose this one. There were quite a few of you who were like, Bleh. spiders, spiders. And I was like, Okay. And to those of you, I recommend not Googling fried terrain because <laughs> it is horrific. But uh, that is sometimes something that we do is um, I let you guys vote for projects. It actually kind of reminds me years ago, I did like this beetle project that um, was really beautiful because it had like that shiny shell where it's like purpley green. Yeah, iridescent. What is that? Iridescent shell. Um, but people were really not okay with that beetle. With beetles, that's <laughs> with funny. With painting beetles. I'm like, good to know. Insects are scary. Okay. People eat beetles too. Can you tell I'm hungry? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay, so using my white, I'm going to go a little bit in the white portion and just put like a highlight on some of these dots. Like kind of just going over a little bit, but not totally covering them. It's just a little hint. And um, I'm going to do that maybe on a few of the bigger ones of the bigger water drops. Just grab like a gray. So take a little bit of water with your, mix it with your black and kind of just do... 
the medium value just on some of them. Just the bigger ones where you could actually see it. Like the really smaller ones, you're probably not going to be able to see it. But Because even water drops have value changes and highlights and all of that kind of stuff. We're relying on the fact that these are so small that we wouldn't really be able to see them. But if you were to like zoom in on, on the photo, if it was a high quality image and you were to zoom in, you would see like a highlight and a value change and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so we're just kind of like giving the hint of it. And you can even take that same gray. So the nice thing about using a gray is that on, it lowers the contrast. So if you're trying to do a really thin web, then you would want to use, on like a dark background, you would actually want to use like more of a gray color and a really thin line because it will be softer and more subtle. If you were to use a bright white, even if the line thicknesses are the same, that white is gonna stand out way more on a dark background. And so if you wanna do like a hint of the actual web itself, um, then I would suggest using a little bit of a gray for that because it's not going to pop out as much and it's gonna kind of communicate that thinness, that delicate of the web. But remember, we're really letting the water drops create these implied lines for us. Okay. It looks to me like your spider, and I just have an up close cam of him, but it looks like he's going, yay. <laughs> he is. He's a happy spider. Um, okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to do our details and our wood grain. So right here on this like frame, there's a little bit of highlight. And I want to use yellow ochre and maybe a little bit of brilliant orange and a little bit of black to create a brown. And I think what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna paint it darker first. So I used water there to remind myself to put it in, but if you painted the whole thing, that's okay. And we're gonna let that dry and then I'll go back in with highlights. So I have that brown. I'm gonna mix some white into it. I'm gonna do the edge here. Try and keep it as straight as possible. I know it's hard with the wavy paper. And then I'm gonna do some dry brush where you can just do like thinner strokes with that dry brush to try and communicate that wood grain, like rough texture. I'm gonna use yellow ochre too, because sometimes the, the white can read, not like that warmth wood that I want it to read. Kind of let yourself play with these different browns and these highlights. And again, it just kind of goes about here. But it's these little details, these little, you know, when we when you do the spooky tree, the little detail on the headstone and this little highlighted area on the frame. These are small things that technique wise are not difficult, but when you pay attention to them, it is what elevates your painting and makes it feel like it's more advanced. Look at that. Love it. Looks like the sun is hitting right there. That's why the spider's happy. Exactly. Right there in the warmth. Okay, let's take off the tape because it's really satisfying when we do that. Ready? Ready. Let me, let me, let me make sure I didn't skip anything. I think I got it. I think I did it all. Just reminded me, whenever you say ready around our three-year-old, he says, set, go. He does. <laughs> Arlo, are you ready? Set, set go. go. <laughs> it's 
Just so satisfying. It. Cool. Super cool. I hope you have fun with this. Now, one thing I want to um, call attention to is, I think if I were to look at this one and the reference one I did, um, the white water, the water drops on this were a little bit bigger overall than my reference photo. And I don't think that's bad, but I need to call attention to why they might feel different. Now, one thing that you can do if you're like, oh, I made mine too big and you don't like that, is one, it's gouache. You can actually like just repaint this whole area and start over. You totally can because gouache is opaque and we would just layer on top. Um, the other thing that you can do is actually just tone down the white. So I would go over with a gray over the um, the like really bright water drops or the really big, one, big ones and that will just soften them so then they don't feel so big. Um, but that's only if you feel like it's not communicating um, a spider web or water drops on a spider web. So, but that is what I would do if I needed to kind of fix that. So thank you so much for painting with me. I hope that even if you had maybe felt uncomfortable painting a spider that you gave this project a go anyway, and you just left the spider out and really let yourself have fun with this. You can change up the designs. Um, you can even recreate a painting from maybe Charlotte's Web and do a little message and maybe it's Charlotte that's right there. Um, there's really a lot of options. So I hope you have fun with it. Thank you so much for painting with me and um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.